In a world falls under numbers law that if you hit number zero you will die by going to the abyss. Licht is our dumb Rizla's protagonist, who has a score of negative 999 after being rejected by too many women. He lived a regular life cosplaying like a low-budget demon slayer swordsmith, but everything changes when he encounters Heine who ropes him into an adventure, where he must fight against the unfair system of the abyss. It all begins with a girl named Hina sitting under a bridge with two girls. She tells them she is in search of a person called the Legendary Ace. As they spoke, a strange-looking guy named Licht popped out of the water wearing a mask that'll scare you in a clown. This scared the living light two girls away as Licht looked like a psychopathic maniac who wanted to steal much more than candies. Hina was startled and curious to know what Licht wanted so Licht began to beg Hina for money and food in the weirdest way possible. He asked for money while trying to get under her plot. Licht keeps acting like a psychopathic pervert hey, yo, what the as he laments about how hungry he is. Just, just, Nana punches him in the face and runs off, but ends up getting chased by Licht. As Heine runs and screams for help, she is rescued by Ambassador Melon, a lady named Nana who happens to be the one who sent Licht on an errand and also runs a food tamer. Licht keeps begging for food from Nana and Hina, but Nana refuses as she sees him as a lazy pervert who doesn't want to work. Hina got into a conversation with Nana about how her mother disappeared into the ground, but Nana told her that she was dragged into the abyss. Nana went further to explain that everyone had different numbers written on them when they were born. These numbers count for something, and the moment those numbers count down to zero, the person is dragged down to the abyss. She told Hina they had to always keep the number count going up. Nana asked to know what Hannah's number meant, and she said it stood for the amount of distance she had walked. Nana was surprised, as she had the number 441, which in the number count meant she had walked farther than my spirometer read. Meanwhile, uh, what's wrong with you? Hina tells Nana that the reason she has walked that much was that she was in search of the legendary ace, as those were her mother's last instructions, as she was sucked into the abyss. However, Nana tells her it's a fairy tale. Hina was disappointed and was about to leave when a group of men stopped her with a man who was a walking catfish scammer but had the description Heine had of this spectacular legendary ace. She believed this man was the legendary ace she had been looking for all this while, and she broke into tears as she couldn't hold herself. The man told her he was a sergeant major in the military and asked Hina to accompany them. But this made Nana uneasy. She didn't want to defy the so-called military. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, Nana gets worried and wonders if Hina is okay as Licht tells her of rumors of a group of wannabes posing as legendary aces and doing terrible things to ladies. Meanwhile, the sergeant major had Hina cornered in a room, but clueless Nina didn't know what was going on yet. She brings out a crystal ball called a ballot with 1,000 written on it. When the sergeant major saw this, he wanted to take it from Hina by force, so he drew his sword and attacked her. Erhan Hina didn't know what was going on, but she was able to stop his attacks because there was a rule that said you can't disobey someone with a higher count than yours, which meant that Hannah had more counts than the surgeon. He then challenged her to a military duel called a star stake where her number was on the line and if she lost. As he gives her a beating, she cries out for mercy, which according to the rules gives him access to her count. Using this method, he drained all her count down to one. The surgeon unveils the truth that he wasn't a legendary ace, but a perverted plot-loving lowlife. He also told her she had been on a pointless journey as all the legendary aces must have been dead by now. This makes Hannah disappointed, so he demands the ballot from her as she sobs. Suddenly, Licht flies in like a Walmart budget, masked all might, and challenges him to a star stake. The surgeon laughs at Licht, because he has a count of negative 999, which means that he had no count to stake after all. The surgeon charges at Licht with various attacks, but Licht doesn't fight back but lays on the ground like a potato with his weird-looking mask and a giant teddy bear. The surgeon and his comrades soon realize that Licht is a ballot user. Licht then gives a speech to Hina, not to look for aces anymore because they are murderers. After his beautiful speech, Licht's mask falls off because of all the attacks he took, and like every masked anime character, he is absolutely gorgeous and was probably hiding his face that had god-level riz. The surgeon convinced his comrades that Licht was not the real deal, and so they charged at Licht, but couldn't get a hold of him as he dodged them with his speed like a deadbeat dad avoiding child support. He was so fast that he couldn't be seen by a mortal eye. Licht barely attacked but the surgeon couldn't stand his presence as Licht walked towards him. 
asking him to return the count he wrongly took from Hina. Even after seeing he was no match for Licht, the sergeant kept throwing pointless attacks at Licht, who dodged them like he was competing in a dance battle. Licht finishes the sergeant off and flies in the air with Hanan in his arms. As they soar, Hina promises to pay Licht back with a dinner treat, but Licht also promises to get her numbers back as he flies down and deals the final blow on the surgeon. The defeated surgeon begs for mercy and is stripped of his count by the mysterious shadow hands in charge of counts and is given to Hina. Hina recalls her mother's last instructions to her, and she gets emotional as she finally finds one of the legendary aces who is unexpectedly a perverted psychopath. Licht snatches the ballot from Hina and is surprised at his luck as the ballot would bring him some cool money. And then is also surprised and disappointed as the ace isn't what she expected. Lick then told her he probably wasn't the ace her mother wanted her to find, and that there were other aces. He then threw a small funny looking teddy bear at her and ran away with his godlike speed. Nana sees Hina from a distance and rushes to her but Hina is so sad that she bursts into tears. She then explains to Nana how Licht took the last thing her mother gave her, but Nana consoled her and told her to hold on to the teddy bear, and she'll know what to do with it soon. Shortly after it popped open only to reveal the ballot he thought he had stolen. She was, she was so happy that she ran out hoping to catch up to Licht. When she finally caught up with him, he was already on a cart leaving the town. She chased after him begging him to stay and come back, but it was all to no avail. As she sobbed alone after he left, one of the surgeon's comrades came to thank her as he was a double agent sent to find the location of the aces and through her help, his mission had been accomplished. The next day, the military police came to question Nana of Lick's whereabouts, but she said she hadn't seen him in a while. Meanwhile, two officers, Sergeant Line and Sergeant Pelly, are given orders to apprehend Lick if they see him. Officer Line enjoys helping people as her count increases, when she helps those who are really in need so the surgeon tells her to save her count for people who are desperately in need of help. When they finally decided to pay attention to the orders, they saw Licht sitting and hiding his face behind another weird-looking mask. Sergeant Line apprehended him, but Licht argued that he wasn't the one on the poster as he sobbed and showed them his negative 1,000 count on his hands. He even had a backup story as he sobbed and explained that his count was a result of the amount of women who had rejected him. He sobbed like a wimp, which he was not and asked Sergeant Line on a date. The surgeon encourages Line to help Licht with a date since he is in desperate need of it, as it would increase her count. Line reluctantly goes forward with the date as Pelly secretly acts as Licht's wingman. As the date progresses, Pelly walks Line and Licht to a creepy bridge with the hopes of making them bond. As they both walked across the bridge, it broke underneath Sergeant Line because, and as expected, Licht didn't miss an opportunity to act like a pervert. As she was about to fall, Licht stretched out his hands to catch her. Afterward, Sergeant Line grew uncomfortable and wanted to end the date but Licht kept sobbing. This made Line continue the date which in return made her count increase. Pella then encourages Line to take it to a higher level called the groping. Licht heard this and pulled out his great groping skills and surprisingly, Linnea's body count kept increasing while the situation was a great help to our perverted Licht. Sergeant Pella grew tired of the games and told Line that Licht was the guy on the poster. Line was shocked and launched a kick at him, but he dodged it with his lightning speed. She kept kicking him but all he did was dodge and look at Line's plot. By the time she realized, she was embarrassed and couldn't throw her kicks anymore. Line couldn't help but wonder what kind of guy Licht was as he didn't have a scratch after all her attacks. But Lick told her she gave him a scratch in his heart, as he approached her with some sexy eyes jutsu. He makes her flustered, causing her to dive into the world of the Lulu, where she fantasizes about her and Lick's marriage. By the time she snaps back to reality, Lick had already made himself scarce. Meanwhile, Hena is working tables with Nana at her tavern and can't help but worry about Lick. Nana spots a man on a table and she is startled as he happens to be a lieutenant in the military. The lieutenant asked about Lick by showing her a poster but she claimed she hadn't seen him. The lieutenant disagrees with her claim and holds her feet down with some magic. He asks her again, so she tells him Licht is heading east. The lieutenant tells his men to head west instead because he doesn't believe what Nana said, after which he sends Heine and Nana flying with a blast and also destroys the tavern. After the blast, 
what they did to deserve such a treatment so Nanette explains to her that it is the punishment for holding a ballot. While Pell and Line are handing out flyers, Line complains about her mini skirt uniform and gets into her imaginary world where she fantasizes about all the uniforms she could have had if she was able to catch Lick and get a promotion. Lick causally appears out of nowhere offering to help Line hand out some flyers. She then realizes it's Lick and starts chasing him, but he disappears. Meanwhile, Hannah is worried about Lick and wants to find a way to inform him about the lieutenant, but Nana tells her they need time to rebuild the bar first as she needs the bar to redeem her counts. Licht hid on high grounds and watched as Sergeant Line and Pella searched for him as he enjoyed the hide-and-seek game he was playing with them. Line then steps on a child's doll and breaks its neck. This makes the child sad and begins to cry. Line apologized in trying to fix the doll after learning it was a get from the child's mother. After watching for a while, Lick comes out of hiding with his fake Haganesca looking mask and helps Line fix the doll as he unveils his beautiful face to Line and the people around him. Sergeant Line is starstruck for a moment as she thinks he is a K-pop celebrity but jerks back to reality and starts chasing him again. Lick enjoys the chase since he can tell people girls chase after him regardless of the context. Lick notices something strange and suddenly stops. But Line keeps charging in as some spikes suddenly come out of the ground, leaving Licht unconscious. Turns out the attack was caused by Lieutenant Jail as he and his men had caught up with Licht. Line rushed to see if Licht was okay, saying her orders were to capture him and not kill him. However, Jail told her he was pretending to be unconscious, which turned out to be true as Licht stood up and took off his disguise. So Lieutenant Jail ordered his men to attack Licht. They all threw their spears at Licht, but he kept evading all their attacks. Unfortunately, Sergeant Line was almost caught in the middle of the attack, but Lick rescued her with a mighty spoon he carried all this while. The back-to-back -back attacks unveiled his sword hidden in this mighty spoon, which he then used to make two slashes that blew away all of Jail's men. Lieutenant Jail walks in revealing that he will handle Lick. He then asks Sergeant Line to recite their current mission, so she announces that their mission is to arrest illegal ballot holders and goes ahead to explain that ballot holders are people with illegal counts as no one should own a ballot except in the military. She also explains that ballots have unique features and can be activated by ballot holders. Licht couldn't help but point out the difference in their number count and told him it was unwise to fight him. But Jail proved him wrong by conjuring a dark surge of power that happened to shock Licht. Jail threw the dark surge of power at him, but Licht quickly flew away evading the attack. But Jail was persistent and kept attacking Licht with metal spikes spearing from the ground. While he kept evading his attacks, he didn't want to fight Jail but ended up showing off his incredible speed, which makes him invisible. Jail assumes he is going to attack, but Licht takes the opportunity and attempts to escape like a scared little grandma. But Jail follows after him and attacks him in the air, sending him flying back to the ground. Licht is surprised as Jail's number count doesn't match his level of power. As he creates a metal cage around him and Licht, Jail then unveils the masked real number count, which was 12,500. He claimed he kept it a secret to avoid being promoted in the military and sit behind a desk just because he likes fighting and violence. Licht then realizes Lieutenant Jail is a powerful bastard and he might actually be screwed. Jail then conjures a metal object towards Licht, but he blocks it using his sword. Line runs to try and help Licht out, but her melons are too big to let her through the cage created by Jail. As Licht blocks his fist attack, Jail sends him another attack that hits him and sends him flying. Licht decides to take things up a notch as Jail mocks his ability to fight. He built up a surge with incredible power and catapulted into the air. When the people around saw this, they were amazed and advised Lieutenant Jail to retreat from the attack as it might be too powerful. Lieutenant Jail doesn't budge but instead, he sends more attacks to Licht as he descends from the air. Licht dodges as usual but ends up getting hit as he approaches the ground. He then puts Licht in a metal cuff and takes down the cage he created and concludes the fight is over. Licht then decides to surrender but Jail knew his will wasn't broken yet. Jail then suspects Licht was once in the military, but what he doesn't understand is why the military had to dispatch all their forces to detain a low number count man like him. He wondered and asked who Licht was but Licht didn't give Jail the answer he wanted. Jail then pulls out a metal torture weapon to get answers from Licht, but as soon as he attacks him with it, Line jumps in front and takes the hit. Lieutenant Jail asks Line why she stepped in, and all she can say is the good things Licht helped her do when he was in disguise. 
Jill reminds Line of her job in the military and scolds her for always handing out papers instead of doing her actual job as he tears one of Sergeant Line's flyers. This got licked mad and he broke out of the cuffs, revealing that he could have cut through all his attacks, but was only holding back because Line didn't want the village to be destroyed. Jill immediately surges up with a larger amount of power in a metal fist as he charges toward Lick, only for Lick to block it with a big swipe of his word. The clash causes a big blast that creates a big hole in the ground. Lick demands an apology for bad-mouthing Line as he increases the power from his big swipe, causing a bigger crack in the ground causing Line to fall off. Lick goes after Line and rescues her in a twinkle of an eye, although she is shocked as they hover in the air. Suddenly, Lieutenant Jail comes flying in, so Lick throws her to him and uses that as his opportunity to escape as Jail gets Line to safety. <laughs> Later on, we see Mast obsessed Lick with a creepy mask as he suddenly sees Hina standing on top of a hill. This startled Lick as she walked to him happy that she had finally found him. Lick is so shocked that he pretends he is a lonely crow just passing by in an attempt to run away. But Hina holds him by his scarf and tells him she knows who he is. She finally takes off his mask and her face is filled with joy, causing him to wonder how Hina found him, but she says it was a hunch. Lick found what she said funny and began to laugh, while Nana came waving at both of them as she was also happy to see Lick. Lick then reaches out to get some food from the tavern, but Nana gives him a cup punch in the face and calls him an unemployed lazy pervert who doesn't deserve nice things unless he pays for it. She then tells him to go fetch wood with Hina. As they fetch some wood, Hina confronts Lick for lying to her and leaving her behind without having a meal together like they planned. Lick tries to defend himself but is shocked as Hina brings out some goodies she had made especially for him. Lick then apologizes but Hina says she is just happy to see him. As they try to share the meal, a big wooden mechanical bird flew over them, leaving a gust of wind. They wonder what it is as they see a girl named Pelmo trying to make it fly. Lick surmises that the bird is going to crash as she heads straight for a ditch. Pomo eventually falls into the ditch, but before she hits the ground, Lick flies in and rescues her. As they get to safety, Pomo doesn't act like someone who just escaped death and even jumps on Lick, because she thinks he can fly and starts touching him around, and for the first time perverted Lick feels uncomfortable around a lady. Pomo then takes Lick and Hina to her workshop, where she shows them the flying machine she's been building and tells them about her dream to one day fly across the mountain. She also wonders why she hasn't gotten it right and what it was she could be doing wrong. Turns out Licht isn't a total dumb ass, as he easily fixed the errors in her design. After parting ways with her, Licht begins to wonder if helping her was the right thing to do, as it was a crime to fly. But Hina commends Licht for doing something nice for Pelmo. Licht thanks Hina for such a kind word and immediately they both have a moment which makes them all red. Suddenly, Pelmo appears with the new fittings made to her flying machine thanks to Licht. As she is about to try the flying machine out, Lick spots the military from a distance. Lick then pulls out his sword like he wants to fight, but suddenly the piece of shit destroys Pomo's flying machine. Huh? The girls were surprised, but Pomo was okay with it, as she already knew the reason. The military confronts Pomo about her research, but she denies it, and says all she has been working on is a windmill. After the military left, Lick apologized, but Pomo understood that if the flight test had been successful, she would have been executed. Heine and Lick then encourage her to build as many flying machines as she can until she gets it right. But Pomo has already come to the end of her road as her count already got to zero, because her count went down for all the times her machine didn't fly. The shadow hands from the abyss came out and took her along with them. This made Hannah sad as memories of her mother came to her. In tears, she ran to try and save Pomo, but the shadow hands gave a smack that sent her flying. As it wanted to attack again, Lick got in the way and hit the hand with his sword, this snapped 30 years off his lifespan, causing him to experience some flashes of the past. Although it also affects his left eye, he still tries to stop Hina from going to save Pomo. This made Hina devastated and sorrowful, causing her to cry a river. Suddenly, Lick gets weak and falls to his knees, while Hina freaks out when she notices the number 001 appears on Lick's left eye. The next day, Hina wakes up and immediately thinks that Lick has ditched her like her dad did so she runs out and sees him there. Later that day, Lick, Hina, and Nana go to the market. Hina noticed that Lick's mood was not cheery as she couldn't help but remember what happened the previous day. Lick then tries to prove he isn't a gloom as he suddenly turns on his perverted mode and tries to take a peek under Hina's plot. As he did that, 
Wind suddenly interrupted him and complained that even an Infinity Stone was easier to locate than him. She goes further to thank Licht for saving her life, as she immediately brings out a handcuff to put on Licht. Bennett is surprised and asks who Line is, so Line and Hina both introduce themselves. Licht could not stand the tension from the two ladies and took to his heels. As he ran, <laughs> Nana analyzes the situation and decides to hold a cooking battle where the winner would get licked. Hina and Line both wonder how they got into this situation, but they both accept the challenge and take it as an opportunity to cook something nice to cheer Licked up, even if he is tied up like a criminal ready to be executed. They both pull up an appealing dress and then the competition begins. Their first challenge is to gather ingredients. They run off and shortly, Line comes back and begins to prepare her dish. She then says she would be making a special stew. Pella, who was on volunteer work, decided to assist her in preparing her special stew. Meanwhile, <laughs> Hannah comes in with a dead bear and a boar. She starts butchering her so-called ingredients like a vicious hunter who lives in the mountains and has to kill for survival. After the contest ends, Line serves her dish first and tries not to show how badly she wants Licht to eat her food or her if he likes. Licht tastes the food and tells Line it tastes delicious. This made Line and the spectators relieved as some of them had placed a bet on Line's food. Hina then brought her dish, but it looked like what a dark witch from a Disney cartoon cooked up. Licht looks at Hina's dish in fear as it looks like what might book him a one-way ticket to the abyss with just one taste. He reluctantly tasted it and to his surprise, it tasted yummy. Huh? It tasted so yummy he couldn't get enough of it. Huh? Line and everyone are shocked, and Pella doesn't believe Licht, so he snatches the spoon to have a taste for himself. He tasted it, and it was delicious. Huh? Licht then compliments Hina for her spectacular cooking, but Hina said she is just happy to see him smile again. Nana then asks Licht to choose which was his favorite dish, causing him to be caught in the middle of a life-threatening decision as he sweats like a constipated guy holding a fart. Immediately, Lieutenant Chael walks in wondering what is going on and why Line is dressed ridiculously instead of doing her job. Licht then breaks out of the prison ropes he was tied with but before he can escape him, he sends his famous metal spike attack that chases everyone away and ruins the whole event. Licht pulls out his sword and charges at Jail as he sends more metal spikes his way. Licht dodges them after which their swords clash, creating a big surge of power as Jail scolds Licht for holding back when they first fought. As the fight continued, Nana immediately stopped them and told them to clean up the mess they made. They stopped fighting and ended up sharing a drink that night. By the time Jail woke up the next morning, Licht, Nana, and Hina had escaped him. He realized that was Nana's plan all along, to get him drunk and then allow them to escape. The group decided to go after them only to run into a town that was destroyed. As they walked into the town, they saw a lady lying on the ground. Line tries to help her, but it turns out she is already dead. Jail then sees some strange marks on the trees and wonders where they came from. Sergeant Pella rushes in and takes them to what was once a beautiful lake, but is now covered with a big hole of dark clouds. They all wonder what the cloud could be as Line asks if it could be the abyss, but it sounds absurd to Pella and Lieutenant Jail. Suddenly a survivor halfway to madness shows up. Jail asks to know what happened in the town. Still terrified, he confesses that he saw a demon from the abyss, and it came out of the hole covered with dark clouds. He then tells the story of how the demon came out of the hole with a fierce face and started spewing fire from its mouth. Jail suggests this could have been done by a ballot holder who had a fire-based power. Jail analyzed the situation and wondered if what the survivors said was true as it was almost impossible for a demon to come out of the abyss. Meanwhile, Licht is hungry and is made to work by Nana as she doesn't give out free food. Jail, Line, and Pele suddenly arrive looking for help for the wounded survivor but also find Licht and his friends there. Although Jail was still pissed at Nana for tricking him, that didn't matter as Jail suspected Licht knew something about this so-called demon from the abyss. As it seemed like a fight was about to start, Nana quickly stopped them as their energy was ruining her business. Nana then offers Jail a drink, but Jail initiates a drinking competition between him and Licht, who buys all the drinks Nana has. As they drink, Jail becomes drunk and asks who Licht is, why the military wants him and why he concealed his full power when they fought. He then tells Licht he suspects he has a hidden ballot. Jail keeps asking Licht who he is, but Licht just makes Jail drink as he avoids answering. Licht's ignorance makes Jail mad, but he keeps making him drink with his smart mouth, 
and offers him more drinks. Lin couldn't help but get jealous and wondered why Lick cared so much about Hina. But she then saw how nice Hina was as she remembered the time she spent with Lick. Meanwhile, Lick and Jail take their last bottles and pass out. Shortly after, they heard an earthquake, and a big hole appeared, causing them to wonder what was going on. The survivor rushes to the lieutenant and explains this was exactly how it happened the last time. The lieutenant then introduced himself to the military soldiers there and told them to evacuate everyone but stay behind and fight. Lick hears something familiar coming from the hole and tells Jail that everybody must evacuate with none remaining. Jail then holds Lick by the scarf, asking him if he knows something about their current circumstance. A dark cloud floats out of the dark hole and Lick wonders how it could be possible and just then, a metal flying machine comes out of the dark hole which scares everyone. This machine looks familiar to Lick, but before he has time to think, it opens fire at them but Jail quickly conjures up an object that blocks the attack. The machine then circles and attacks again, but this time with a missile which causes a big explosion. This Lick becomes angry and his aura suddenly changes as he walks to pick up his sword. Nana tells Lick not to give in, but he tells her to stay out of it as he puts on a mask and reminds Hana she wanted to know who he was. He then said he was the plunderer and his goal was to take everything the nation had. Lick then approaches Mizuka to give her the fight she wants, and before they begin, they put their stars in a line as it was a rule when Ace's fight called a star theft bout. The fight begins with Mizuka going all out with her shots, but Lick dodges them all until one hits him down. Hina and Nana couldn't help but analyze the fight and Hina sees that Mizuka's count is more than Lick's and hopes Lick makes it out alive. Pele has a different thought as he observes and says Lick is holding back his true powers somehow because even if his count isn't as high as his opponents, he somehow fights on the same level with them. Meanwhile, Lick is a little beat but then uses the blood on his hands to put warrior marks on his mask. While Hina questions if this is the Lick she knew, a mighty surge of power explodes from him. As the power surged, his count began to increase exponentially, causing his whole demeanor to change. Mizuka was slow to realize Shib was about to get real as she smiled and happily said she wanted Licht to be the one who killed her. She then tries to get back into the fight but Licht was nowhere to be found. Fear grips her as Licht starts moving like a ghost and starts giving her the beating of her life. Pell and Line stood there astonished that Licht was able to hold his own against Mizuka, but Hina refused to believe that bloodlusted Licht was the same Lick she knew. Nana then tells them to get as far away from Lick as possible as the great power begins to overwhelm Lick. Nana then explains that if Lick lets the power out, another personality takes over, and it's a man who is driven by the will to kill. He continues to attack Mizuka, and it only takes one attack to knock her ass down as her count begins to drastically reduce. Turns out it was another personality possessing her, causing her to effortlessly act like Hitler was her role model. When she wakes up, she wonders where she is and freaks out with all the blood on her hands. Nana then tells a story of how Mizuka was always a kind person in the group of aces. She then said someone had drugged Mizuka to bring out her ace powers so she would attack Lick and cause him to change back to the killer he was. Meanwhile, Lick is still lost to his killer instinct. So Hina goes to hug him from behind. Nana tells Hena to be careful as she continues begging Lick to change back. Lick suddenly turns and tries to attack Hena but Mizuka fires a shot at him to get his attention. Lick turns around and grabs her by her collar before tossing her to a wall. As he moves to finish her off, Jail suddenly comes and blocks the attack. He is still cocky even though a bullet in his chest and even challenges Lick to a battle. Lick throws an attack at Jail but he blocks it causing a big blast. Mizuka is scared and comes in between Licht and Jail as she begs Jail not to fight Licht, because he isn't himself. As they spoke, another attack comes in from Licht, but cocky Jail blocks it and starts giving his speech about convictions. All Licht could think of was to kill as he continued to attack the Jail. However, Jail suddenly blows him away with an attack and starts giving a righteous speech as his count changes from 900 to 12,499. While Lick struggles to fight his inner demon, Jail reveals that he has two counts as he unveils a hidden count in his other glove, which was 45,000. Lick rushes in to attack Jail, but he already conjured a metal beast to battle Lick. Lick and the beast go head to head, but the beast ends up putting Lick down with a punch. Jail walks up to Lick and kicks off his mask, asking him if he is awake yet. Lick's friend quickly rushes to him, 
causing him to snap out of his killer personality and apologize to them. Meanwhile, in a certain church, there's a man who is reading the story of Tortoise and the Hare to some children. The children were shown to be happy after hearing the story. Soon, a soldier from the Althea Royal Guard arrives at the church to meet the man who was reading the storybook. That soldier reports that not only did the mission to capture Licht fail, but Mizuka, who was controlled by her other personality, regained her sanity as well. That man whose name is Schnoman claims that it's all fine and there's a lot of chances to capture Licht, so he shouldn't worry about it. After the end of the Abyss Demon incident, Licht and his friends decided to hide somewhere in the forest. While Licht recovered from his injuries, the hands of all things didn't stop appearing and harassing the girls. Due to the Star Theft Bout battle, he and Mizuka left unconcluded. As the girls struggled with the embarrassing situation, Licht watched them excitedly with so much attention. Hannah then asked Pella where Jail went so he explained that Jail was called back to the main headquarters of the Althea Royal Guard by the Supreme Commander, Alexandrov Grigorovich. In Althea, Jail arrived at the commander's office. After Jail saluted, Alexandrov tried to hug Jail but he avoided him. Jail reported his encounter with a strange group with black uniform to him and asked him if they were part of the Royal Guard as well. Alexandrov angrily denied that and claimed that they weren't under his control. This made him confused and wondered why the group wasn't under his control, so Alexandrov explained that they were different factions that handled assassination and spying, known as the Special Service. Jail wanted to ask him another question, but before he could speak, Alexandrov stated that he knew Jail wanted to question him about Licht and his true identity, which made Jail realize that he may not be able to keep his secret long enough. Alexandrov explains that while he didn't know about the full details, the legendary Red Barons, also known as the Aces, were created as mass weapons for the abandonment war, with Licht as the commander of the troops. Jail finds this ridiculous and states, there's no way a human can live for 300 years long, so Alexandrov explained they stopped aging at a certain point due to their status as mass weapons. Alexandrov then asks if he was hiding Licht knowing that if he lied his count would be reduced as lying was against his convictions, which was the bedrock of his counts. Jail replies and Alexandrov notices Jail's count has reduced to 12,498. When Alexandrov asked Jail if he acted against all things which shocked Jail, he told him that he must capture Licht or he would end up being killed by special service instead. Jail had no say in the matter and gave in to the order to hand over Licht to the army. Back in the forest, Jail returns to find Licht and arrest him. Upon his return, Licht notices that the royal guard was forcing Jail to capture him, so he made it look like he surrendered for his sake. The girls tried to stop him but Jail pushed them away and bound them with his medal. While she is about to handcuff Licht, Nana appears in front of him and slaps him, saying that he shouldn't follow the orders given to him, but his wishes instead. Thanks to Nana's talk no jutsu, Jail has a change of heart and chooses to help Licht instead. Soon, Nana reveals herself as a legendary ace, who happens to have time travel abilities who then sends him high up Pell and line to the past to see what happened 300 years ago, and begs them to change the past where she failed. After arriving in the past, Jail was confused and wondered where they were. Soon, they saw a younger Mizuka and Licht going inside a huge building, which made them even more curious. Ale and the others went inside the huge building and observed the surroundings which made them realize that they were in the past. Although the technology seems to be far more advanced as well. Jail wonders if the black-haired dude they saw earlier was younger Lick back or not, as he looked nothing like his present self. Pell also wonders how the technology in the past was far more advanced than in the present time. Jail and the others then followed the other people and went into the enrollment ceremony and soon found out the huge building was a training school. While looking around, Heine is pushed by a tall, ugly dude and falls on the ground which makes Line so angry that she tries to make the guy apologize. However, the tall guy told Line to shut up and slapped her. Jail and Pello then went ahead to protect the girls from the guy. As Jail tries to attack the tall guy, he realizes that he doesn't have his ballot, which means he can't use his metal abilities. Because of this, he was defenseless as he got punched by the tall guy instead. As the guy moved to punch him some more, Mizuka showed up to stop him. The tall guy's name is revealed to be Duen Tekitora. He asked Mizuka, that she wanted to be bullied so badly since she told him to stop earlier. Mizuka began to freak out, but a man with a wooden sword named Sakai Tokikes came in and told Tekitora to stop, as he was making a fool of himself. Jail stands up and tells Tokikes to stay back 
as he believes he can handle Takatora by himself. Tokikaze disagrees and claims that he must stand here to protect the girls and weirdos who are cosplaying as soldiers, which angers Jail. Soon, Hana overhears someone commenting on the situation, and when she looks around, she finds Lick looking at her plots. She gets embarrassed and stomps on Lick's face, and asks him why he always acted like an unloved grandpa. The enrollment ceremony soon began when a pot addict named Alan admonished the newbies by informing them that they were no longer ordinary citizens but soldiers, and they must follow the orders from their superiors. The pink-haired woman, Ferenda, told Alan to speak nicely and not scare the newbies which he found annoying. As everyone saluted, Shmoman made his entrance to the ceremony and read the storybook about the tortoise and the hare, which made everyone confused. As Shmoman reads his storybook, three newbies mocked him, thinking he had a few screws loose. Shmoman tried to tell them to keep quiet, but they didn't listen. Alan casually pointed his gun at the girl. After he kills the girl, he tells the other two guys to make sure they follow orders if they ever get isekai'd, and then he kills them as well. The other newbies freaked out and tried to escape, but the door was locked, so they were trapped inside the building. Alan shoots his gun at the roof and tells them to be silent. He then pointed his gun at Hina and said that she deserved to die too as she was crying on the battlefield, which was pathetic. Jail and the others worry that Hina might get killed, so Alan tells Jail and the others not to move or he will kill Hina as well, while also saying that soldiers shouldn't let their emotions control their actions. As Alan was about to kill her, he was stopped by Tokikaze. After Tokikaze saved Hina, he was also held at his point. Soon, Lick claimed that the headmaster had been taken hostage, so Alan shouldn't kill Hina and Tokikaze. Shmoman asked Licht if he seriously thought he could kill him with a tree stick, which made Licht show his magic to him. After a brief awkward moment, Licht was surprised that nobody laughed at him and his magic. Okay. Shmoman then tells Licht to kill him, or else Alan will kill both Heine and Tokikaze. Licht states he won't kill him Stupid. because violence isn't good. After hearing his words, Hina and the others realize that he is indeed Licht from the present time. Shmoman reveals that he would have no choice but to kill everyone in the ceremony. And this makes everyone freak out except Lick, who has balls of steel. Before Schnoman can do anything, he's stopped by Ferenda, a female instructor, and reveals that it's all an act. The three newbies that Alan killed earlier are still alive. Alan also revealed that they only wanted to pass a message about the dangers of being emotional. During lunchtime, Jill thinks back about what happened at the ceremony and realizes that while Alan was indeed acting, the killing intent he felt from Schnoman was real and doesn't seem to be acting in the same way as Alan. In the headmaster's room, Shmoman tells Alan that there is a rare warrior here, which refers to Licht. Alan wondered if Shmoman was serious about that since even Tokakaze was better than him, as Licht refused to kill his enemy and acted selfishly. On the other side, Licht was simply doing some plot hunting which made the girls uneasy. When he runs away, Jiel wonders if he is Licht from the present time, as he has a different name called Sakai Rihito, and he is shorter than the present, not to mention that he has black hair instead of white. Soon Pell and the others enter the computer room to research Allthing while Alan comes in and explains that Allthing is a god, which confuses them. He said that one day, a god fell from the sky to Japan, which would later be known as the Allthing. The Allthing could create new rules for the world, which allowed the United Nations use the ballots to stop the nuclear war and the usage of nuclear weapons. However, Alan said that the world is still far from being safe. After the explanation, Alan told them that the class was about to start so they should return to their classroom and leave. After Alan leaves, Jail and the others begin to question the origin of all things. Alan said, there's a possibility that the counts and how people always get sent into the abyss when their count reaches zero were set by humanity with the use of the all thing. Jail and the others begin to suspect that this school may have a link with the origin of Althea and so they must make sure their questions are answered. Hina is glad that everyone is in the same class, except for Jail and Tokikaze, who are sitting next to each other and always arguing, while discussing which instructors will teach them. Line said she wants Ferenda as she looks nice and kind, while both Jail and Tokikaze want to land. Pellet asked Hina if she was fine because staying at the school meant she would be trained as a soldier, which she only just realized and was scared. Alan then comes in and introduces himself and reveals he was originally the one who would teach the class, but due to a request, the job was given to Schnoman instead. As Alan left the classroom, he recalled that while spying on Jail's group, they seemed to know nothing about the computer and modern tech. The strangest thing he found was the name Althea being mentioned, 
which raises questions about jail and others' true identities and where they come from. Back in the classroom, Schmelman explains the rules of the school to the students. He explains that each student will receive two stars, and to remain students, they must own at least one star, and if they don't have any stars, they will be expelled from the school. If a student obtains 10 stars, they will graduate from the school and join the military immediately, when he added that the instructors would check the students' stars every day at 18 o'clock. Hina asked Schmelman how to obtain more stars, and he explained that the students who gained good scores at exams and activities would get a star. If they wanted a more effective way to get a star, they would have to fight against another student in a duel. On hearing the explanation, Jail and the others realized that the rules were extremely similar to the star theft bout, and believe that this is most likely how it originated. For unknown reasons, Schmelman did not give Rihito any stars and told him that he would have to steal them from the other students within three days. In the headmaster's room, Alan asked Schnollman why he didn't give stars to Rihito, and he explained that he wanted to test Rihito and see how he would handle the situation. On the second day, when the girls were having a bath, Rihito is shown peeping at them in the bathroom, which enrages the plotless girls. On the third day, Rihito still hasn't received any stars. The class's students discovered that someone had destroyed the storage room and stolen their stars from it. At first, the students suspected that it was Rihito who stole their stars, due to the fact he started with no stars. Soon, they overheard Mizuka's scream, so they went to find her. They find out that Tekatora was bullying Mizuka for her stars. Upon seeing him, Tokikaze noticed that Tekatora had a lot of stars stolen from the other class's students, revealing that he was the one who destroyed the storage. Tokikaze tried to tell Tekatora to stop, however, he didn't even listen to him. After Tekatora leaves, Line was furious at his behavior and claimed she wanted to challenge him in the Star Theft Bout battle. But Pella stopped her from doing so, as he believes Takatora won't accept her challenge since he had already collected 10 stars thanks to stealing. Soon after, Jail gives one of his stars to Mizuka, and while Hina is about to give Topikaze her star since his was also stolen, another guy begs for a star so Topikaze asks her to hand it to him instead. At 18 o'clock, Takatora was already anticipating his promotion, however, Riido appeared and proceeded to beg Takatora to return Tokikaze's stars. Takatora slapped Riido to the wall and called him weak. Hina watched as gave Riido the beating of a lifetime, as they wondered if there was a way to stop the bully. Despite his situation, Riido still kept smiling, which made them think he might have damaged his head due to the beatdown. Afterward, Shmoman comes in and asks Takatora where his stars are. He wanted to show him the stars but unknown to him, Rihito managed to steal them and give some back to Tokikaze and the other students. Since he was back to two stars, Tekator had no choice but to stay in the school. He gives Jail some stars and explains it was originally meant for Rihito, as he just wanted to test him. However, it was unnecessary now since Rihito had already stolen Tekator's stars, so he gave them to Jail instead and said that he deserved to be a soldier. As usual, Rihito goes around spying on the ladies while they take their bath, but runs off when spotted. His actions made the authorities announce that they'll punish the whole class unless they bring the culprit out. Tokikaze decided to investigate and find out the culprit himself, but Rihito tells him to send him in as the culprit, which he definitely was, as he pretends to take the fall for the greater good of his class. Rihito then begs Tokikaze not to investigate so he would not be found out as the real culprit. Unfortunately, Rihito falls for his simple switch trap set by Alan and holds him up like a trophy. Shortly after, the students find themselves in a forest as they think it must be a survival exercise. Rihito didn't waste any time going back to his perverted ways as he took shots of the girls' melons. They get embarrassed but then wonder if they will keep being embarrassed even when it comes to battle and decide to give Rihito a clearer view of their melons but Rihito's demeanor suddenly changes as he pulls off his jacket to cover her up. Rihito then asks them if they want to be army officers, as it would need them to make tough choices like killing someone. This question brings the girl back to reality as she speaks of not having a choice but to be in the army. Schmoman comes in and tells them he can make them an army that wouldn't have to kill, and all they had to do was work hard and be stronger than every opponent they faced. This elated their mood and they decided to go for it while Jail wondered if the guy was just gaslighting them. Jail snoops around and overhears Schmoman, Alan, Davi, and Ferenda having a conversation about the ACE experiment. Alan then hears sounds and suspects something is wrong as he goes out to check. Little Nana comes to the rescue jail. She takes him to her room and tells him if he is caught, he'll be killed. 
Nana then tells him she got a letter from her future self telling her she would send someone to her in the future. Jail is surprised and wonders if she is Nana from the future. She then tells him that she was the first ace they ever made and gives him some valuable information about people who had extraordinary powers without using a ballot and Schnollman was one of them. She also tells him it was Schnollman's blood they used to create aces, but all the children experimented on died except her, and Licht was the next to get the surgery. Jail couldn't help but wonder if future Nana wanted them to stop the surgery from happening, so he asked little Nana a series of questions to try and find out what future Nana wanted them to change but little Nana kept telling him her future self didn't give her that information. When it was time for the jail to go, little Nana gave Jail a device sent to her by her future self which contained the reason she sent Jail back to the past. Jail then asks little Nana to go with him as a little child shouldn't be on her own, but she refuses as it would change the future too much. He leaves and makes a promise to return to the future and play with Nana to her heart's content. Before he leaves the premises, Alan sees him and points a gun to his head telling him he is a dead man for trespassing. To change the future, Jail launches an attack on Alan, but he blocks it and brings him down by hitting him with a gun on his head. Jail thinks of his next move as he tries to launch another attack, but Alan seems to already know what he wants to do. This scenario seemed familiar to Jail as he realized Alan was Alexandrov, his adopted father. Alan then asks to know who he is and which army he is from before he kills him. Jail decides to take a gamble by introducing himself and revealing that he is from the Althea Royal Guards, who are led by their commander Alexandrov. Immediately, Alan realizes this was Nana's doing. Afterward, Jail tells him Nana sent him and three others to change the outcome of the future. So Alan walks away and tells him to report to him the next day. Not long after, Alan takes Jail and the others to a place where he shows them the reality of the world they live in and how much it needs saving. Afterward, Alan asked what they would do if they were in his shoes in such a circumstance and told them not to meddle in their affairs. In the computer room, they all find it hard to accept that Lick's fate has been sealed and there is nothing they can do to stop him from becoming an ace and killing people. They then realize that Lick is a hero of the war and without him the Althea they know would not exist. This made Jail refuse to continue the quest if it meant wiping out the Althea they knew just to save Licht and wanted to find another way to help Licht instead. During training, everyone is exhausted after jogging except Jail who wants to spar with Alan because he knows Alan is his father and wants to make sure he can beat him if he needs to face him later on. They both spar as Schnoman walks in and takes them to another training regiment where he hands them weapons that are unique to their personality. Schnollman then gets into a conversation with Ferenda about how fast the war was coming. Ferenda suggests they take the experiment to a new level by testing on humans, but Schnollman angrily disagrees as he wants to protect his little disciples. That night after winning an inter-class competition, they all celebrated their win and Riedo's class, a team thanked him for leading them to victory. They then acknowledged him as their commander but Riedo felt weird about it. They then saw the possibility of being an army that would not have to stain their hands with blood thanks to Riedo. And this made him vow to bring this dream of theirs to reality. Meanwhile, Ferenda urges Schmoman to allow them to move further with the experiments by using human subjects but Schmoman gets angry as he wouldn't let his children go through an experiment that would cost them their lives. Ferenda makes him understand that there are people whose DNA matches the experiment and they would have a lesser risk with them. Soon after, Riedo agrees to undergo the experiment and hugs Schnollman, as he tells him not to worry. He whole class had got mad when they discovered Riedo was undergoing a dangerous experiment that might claim his life. But Ferenda explains to them that it's for the greater good and to help win the upcoming war. Riedo walks in and tells everyone if there is a chance to save everyone. He would be a crazy person not to take it. That night, Jail tells Hina, Pedal in line that there is nothing they can do to prevent the surgery but Hina disagrees as she can't stand to see Licht become a monster in the future. Line takes sides with Hina but Jails makes them understand that about Licht becoming an ace, there will be no Althea to go back to. He claims that he isn't willing to sacrifice his entire world just so Licht can avoid becoming an ace, to the point that he will fight the others if necessary. On the day of the experiment, while Rihito went in, Line wanted to stop him from becoming a killer and trying to inform Licht about the future. She tries to stop him, but Rihito tells her it's okay. Wandering through the school, Jail stumbles on Don't Take a Taurus, stealing Mizuka's remaining star. However, she does not ask Jail to help her get her star back. Instead, she asks for one of Jail's stars. 
While Mizuka may want things to change, she knew wishing wasn't enough to enter bullying and become strong. Meanwhile, Line is thrown into a spiral of self-loathing as Peli tries to comfort her in his own way. <laughs> explaining that it is in her nature to want to help people even if that help would ultimately do more harm than good. Despite his contrasting worldview, it is something that he finds admirable. He encourages her not to change because there are people out there who understand her value. Just as the build-up to a romantic moment was blooming, they were interrupted by Heine. While Line wallowed in her shame and regret, Hannah was busy thinking of a solution to the problem they were facing. Hina realizes that what broke Licht was not him becoming an ace, but him becoming a killer. Hina then tells them that if they can stop him from killing and get him to rely on his friends to share the burden, then he can win the war without losing his soul. Jill comes in and agrees with the idea as he suggests saving Nana too. Just then, news comes in from Alan that the operation went well. This makes them all happy as Hina broadcasts it to the rest of the class. As Alan was about to leave, he spotted some choppers flying in and wondered what was going on. Before he realizes it, the choppers open fire on the school. Everyone freaks out as some army officers come out with guns in search of a body. As the officers in green progress, their orders are to shoot anything on sight. One team was about to shoot a group of girls but Jail and Tokikes came to rescue them. While they hid, everyone wondered what was going on and why the war which was scheduled to begin in March had started so early. Ferenda calls and explains that the other original ballot-holding countries have come together in secret to start the war early, launching a surprise attack upon the one country with three of the seven ballots. Ferenda seems to be happy that the war has begun, but she also reveals the power to the lab has been cut off and the backup generator needs to be on to keep Rihito alive. This made everyone in class that work together to try and save Rihito as they battled the enemy without killing them. At the other end, Nana encounters an officer who is about to pull the trigger on her. Hina hopes that Lick will come to her rescue, but back at the lab, Lick's hair has turned white. The students successfully turn on the backup power, making Riido's condition stable once again. The procedure is quickly completed and Riido wakes up and is given a sword which is a replica of a ballot to enhance his power. He then tells him for his sword to function properly he had to embed it with his count and further explains what a count was and how he would do it. Afterward, Ridido flies to the battlefield, causing a big blast. The enemy soldiers wondered what it was that caused the blast only to discover it was Ridido. They opened fire at him, but the bullets couldn't touch him as he saw it all in slow motion. As he approaches the enemy soldiers, they easily realize he is the protagonist of the show, and they were just unfortunate NPCs made for his character arc. When Ridido sees Hina and his injured friends, he gets angry and destroys the choppers hovering above them. His comrades are amazed at Rihito's new ability and given the name Ace of Flashing Strike because of how fast he is. Rihito battles the enemy soldier and claims victory without killing him. His comrades see him and rush to hug him. Suddenly, the enemy soldiers stood up and told Rihito his idea of not killing was stupid. As they unveiled, they had been strapped with C4 bombs. Rihito suddenly swiped the detonator from the leader's hands and crushed it but they had something up their sleeve as they told Rihito they already planted a nuclear bomb inside the school with the detonators hidden in their bodies. And if he wanted to save anyone, he could simply just kill them and stop acting like a kid with stupid ideals. The man tries to provoke Rihito to make him kill, but Rihito pulls out his sword and begs them to leave, promising not to come after them. The man makes him understand that sparing a life is useless, as they will end up dying of hunger instead. He goes further to tell them the world is beyond saving. He then tells his squad to ready their bombs as Ridido and his team's death guarantees them food. The man begins a countdown and Riido is stuck between two choices, to kill or to let his team die. As the countdown was over, Tofikes rushed in and asked Riido to let him finish them off but Riido had no choice but to stop him before taking a big swipe with his sword that ended all the enemy soldiers. Before their leader dies, he confesses that he lied about the nuclear bomb, and he wants Rihito to survive the war as the future needs more people like him. Everyone is surprised that Rihito killed people but Rihito still acts all normal and runs off. Some of his teammates are relieved that Rihito is back to his normal freaky self, but Hina doesn't feel that way and goes after him. She finds Rihito in despair as he laments about killing a man. Meanwhile, the time came for Jail and the others to return to the future. 
Jail bids Tokike's farewell as Hannah still finds the right word that would stop Riido from becoming a killer. After Jail and the others left, Takake's and the rest of the team wondered what happened and how Jail and the others got to the past. Riido comes in and tells them they'll be waiting for them in the future as they are now friends. Nana then explained how the Waste War started and how Lick battled alone and lost his ability to smile from all the burdens of his battles. She also talks about Tokake's, Alan, Tekitora, and Mizuka who eventually became aces. But this didn't remove the burden from Licht as he had vowed to kill so his friends wouldn't kill. She also tells the tale of how a new Althea was formed by Althing in the air, leaving the old city underneath after the war was over and a count was forced on all new citizens of the new Althea to keep the population in check and the old city, where the waste war happened, became the abyss. After some years, Licht doesn't age an inch and refuses to remove his mask. Nan had assumed that Licht would never remove his mask because she reminded him of the war and all the atrocities he committed. Nana then says why she wanted to change the past to stop Licht from regretting it. In the present, Heine, Jail, Line, and Pelly are back and Hina suddenly goes to look for Licht. Nana brought drinks to celebrate their return, but everyone seemed depressed. Nana tries to force Jail to drink as she takes his glass away. Jail requests for his glasses refusing to drink, but Nana reminds him of the promise he made in the past. She finally gets her fun time and makes everyone drink alcohol. Suddenly, Hina brings line and opens her melons like a buffet for everyone to have a bite sample. It's like a melon trade fair, but instead of it to make Lit happy, he begins to tear up like a baby at the sight of melons. Meanwhile, Nana is a bit heartbroken as she feels she is one of the reasons Licht never forgets about the war. Jail realizes this and punches Licht back to reality and plays him a video showing how much Nana cares about him. Licht rushes in and hugs her telling her he didn't keep his mask on because of her, but he didn't know what expression he should have if he had taken it off. While walking in the forest, Hannah attacks Licht with various traps. Afterward, Hannah sobs as she asks Licht why he'd avoided her and wonders if Licht hates her, but Licht tells her otherwise as he asks her mother's name. Licht revealed that he knew Hannah's mother's name was Tsukina Pharaoh, and explained that Tsukina was from 300 years ago, just like him. While explaining how he knew Tsukina's past, he mentions that he already knew Hina was her daughter way back when they first met by learning her name and the fact her name was written in Kanji, the writing system that should have been long abandoned in Althea. He also reveals that her father was Sakai Tokikes, the one whom he murdered which was another reason he felt despair for over 300 years. Later on, Heine, Line, Pell, and Nana all pass out from the wine drugged by Licht, after which he tells them he is leaving to defeat the special service. Just as Licht was about to leave, he heard someone telling him to stop and discovered it was Jail who was resistant to the drug. Meanwhile, the special service begins assassinating army commanders from Althea Royal Guard in an attempt to make Alexandrov Grigorovich hand over the three ballots he owns. As Secretary Erin discusses the situation with him, Alexandrov notes that a lot of members of the Royal Guard have been dying from some strange disease lately. But every time they attempt to investigate, the Special Service always solves the cases immediately and claims they all die from an accident. Later on, Alexandrov summoned the three Grand Generals to a meeting where they discussed whether the Royal Guard should give their ballots to the Special Service. During the meeting, both General Robert Lightning and Yai supported the decision to give their ballots to them as Althing's support to keep Althea floating is slowly disappearing, after a special service's ballots were stolen five years ago. With the Abyss Demon incident that happened only recently, it seemed like it was only a matter of time before Althea fell into the ground, so they must reapprove the support as soon as possible before it's too late. For General Vanvich, however, he opposed this idea, but he is made to understand that their decision would cause a war between the special service and Althea Royal Guard. Robert claimed they should have no problem fighting against them, as long as he released his army to fight. Back in the forest, both Licht and Jail argue with each other. Jail recalls what Licht said back then when he said he wanted to steal everything from Althea, meaning that what Licht wanted to do was to steal all the ballots from the Special Service and Royal Guards to make Althea fall. As a soldier of the Royal Guards, Jail decides to protect Althea from falling even if it meant fighting him. However, Licht explained that he must carry out his mission as it was the only way to atone for the creation of Althea. Licht asked Jail to protect Hina and the others for him, but Jail refused and said Licht should have to do that job himself instead, but Licht stated that he couldn't. While heading towards the special services bases, 
he reveals that he wants to meet Hinan again and stay together with her after everything has ended. The next morning, Shuoman informs his henchmen that Licht was coming to them. Nicola stated that they were ready to stop Licht once Shuoman gave them his order, but he said such an order was unnecessary because he already sent one of the spies to do that job for him. In the forest, everyone recovered from the drug and found out that both Licht and Jail had left. After Hina had explained Licht was most likely going to Althea alone, they immediately went to find them. As Licht was about to leave abandoned capital Hofnam, he noticed someone was coming and got pinned down to the ground by gravity. The gravity user reveals he is Lick's natural enemy, and his flashing strike is weak against his gravity. The gravity user turns out to be Tekatora, the heavy baron. He uses his gravity to destroy the roof of a ruined house, which causes the rocks to crush Lick down. As the rocks fall, Tekatora states that he doesn't hate Lick's action, but he won't allow him to destroy Althea, so he needs to die. Despite his situation, his only thought was to talk to Hina one last time because he felt she must hate him for leaving. At the same time, Hina and the others arrived at the abandoned capital Hofnam in hopes of finding Lick, only to find out that he was already dead. While they mourn his death, the spy from the special service comes to capture them. In Althea, Jail just arrived at the royal capital in an attempt to meet Alexandrov. After a conversation with Secretary Aaron, Jail kicks Alexandrov's door which opens and ends up hitting his head while he asks him if he knows the difference between good and bad. Alexandrov reveals a photo of the helicopter from the Abyss Demon incident and talks about a new war, urging Jail to be prepared. Jail reveals he wants to wager his stars and asks Alexandrov why he betrayed Class A 300 years ago. A pissed Alexandrov called Jail shitty four eyes and accepted his challenge in the Star Theft Bout battle. The fight begins, and as Alexandrov lands his kick, Jail dodges it and attacks his chin which makes Alexandrov surprised that the reason he fought him back 300 years ago was to find his weakness for this fight. In the end, Jail is defeated and his count is reduced to only one. After the fight, Alexandrov explains his past to Jail and how his real family was killed a long time ago. After hearing his story, Jail stood up looking all beat up but still wanted to continue the fight, which was baffling to the old man. Alexandrov then fires Jail from the army and tells him to make himself scarce. Back in the abandoned capital, Hina and the others woke up only to realize that they all had been handcuffed. At first, Tekatora wonders why Hana and the others appeared in his memory, but he soon realizes that it is Nana's doing. Tekatora then asks them for Mizuka's whereabouts and tries to use his gravity on them to force them to answer. Just then, a spy of the special service informs Tekatora that someone was coming. Before the person arrived, he warned them to watch what they said if they wanted to keep their heads. Suddenly, Shmoman walks in and Hina and the others are shocked. Upon seeing their faces, Shmoman noticed there was something wrong with his memory and soon realized it was Nana's doing. Hina confronts Shmoman, asking him why he betrayed Licht in Class A, even though everyone believed his words so much back then. However, Shimomen revealed that everyone in Class A was more useless than Sakura and so stupidly gullible that they actually believed that they could win the war without killing their enemies. He then suggests using them in the Ace Project, so he ordered his subordinate to give them the drugs that would make their gene compatible with the experiment. Once he leaves, Tekitero stops the henchman from giving them the drug. He quickly releases Line and the others and tells them to go away because he isn't in the mood to kill them. As they leave, Tekatora sees a ballad dropped from Hina's bag. As he takes Hina's ballad from the ground, he thinks they might have a hidden agenda which makes him angry, so pins them down with his gravity with intent to kill them. As Line struggles to move, both Hina and Peli try their best to stop Tekatora so Line can have the chance to escape. Thanks to them, Line was able to escape by riding the horse outside the abandoned capital. After Line had escaped, Hina told Tekatora that Licht was still alive and that his corpse looked too clean to be killed by him. Although he doesn't believe what Hina said, he becomes frustrated and decides to keep all of them alive until the next morning to make Hina realize how stupid she is for claiming Licht didn't die. On the other side, Line arrives at the place where Licht was killed. She also noticed how clean his body was so she checked to see if he was still alive. She tries her best to make him wake up but she too was about to pass out from her injuries. Before she passes out, she notices the villagers from home her previous station appear in front of her and begin to tending to her wounds. Line also uses the opportunity to confess her love to Licht. Seeing Licht's eyes are still closed, Sister Greengrocer tries to slap him and tells him to stop sleeping like a coward. 
The next morning, Tekator is about to execute the entire group, but before he can attack, Blit arrives at the abandoned capital. Tekator moves to attack him, but he tells him to hold on for a moment as this is part of their promise, so Tekator decides to hold on for a while. Blit tells Pell that he needs to heal Line's injury in the medical room in the capital. After acting like a pretentious bitch who wants to work, Pelly brings Line to the medical room and calls her a dumb bitch, which she was. As Pella leaves, Lick goes to talk with Hena, and as he confesses his love to her, he reveals the reason why he denied her feelings earlier was mainly due to his guilt about killing her father. Hena calls him an idiot and kisses him. Afterwards, she makes Lick promise not to abandon her again and even wanted him to put a baby in her to tie her down. But he wasn't ready to be a baby daddy. After their bonding, the fight between him and Tekatora finally began. Before they could continue, Lick was suddenly attacked by Mizuka in her second personality. While everyone was shocked that Mizuka was being controlled by the special service once again, Tekatora didn't care as long as she wasn't his enemy. With Sanara's help, Lick was easily overwhelmed by their coordinated attacks. Just like their previous battle, Mizuka keeps forcing Lick to kill her. Lick tried to dodge her bullets, but his movement was locked out by Tekatora's gravity. He explains that the reason why Mizuka was acting strange was because he broke her after abandoning her. Since she always idolized him, she developed a bad habit of always relying on him whenever something happened to her. He went ahead to blame Lick for everything that happened to Mizuka in those 300 years. Both Sanara and Tekatora were prepared to deal their finishing blow on Lick, and with no other choice, Lick decided to activate his bloodlust genes to win the fight. However, he is interrupted by Jail who calls him a pathetic loser, with no redeeming qualities. After he calms down, they work together to fight against Samnera and Tekatora. While they fight, Nana notices that Jail's count has been reduced to only one and asks him why, but he doesn't disclose. Despite his low count, Jail blocks all of Samnera's bullets with small pieces of metal. While blocking her bullets, Jail intentionally angers her so she continues shooting her bullets at him. But none of her bullets hit the mark. Jail slowly approaches her, asking if she still remembers the things he told her 300 years ago, which made her regain her sanity. Meanwhile, Tekatora wondered why Licht couldn't understand why it was necessary to kill their enemy to achieve victory. Licht says that the mindset of killing and stealing by force will only create more wars than bring peace to the world, so he will reform the non-killing army and end the war in a good way. He adds that he wanted to create the right path for humanity by destroying Althea. At this point, Tekatora got fed up with his Disney happily ever after bullshit and prepared to finish him once and for all. Tekatora created several green orbs surrounding Lick, and seeing that he didn't know what it was, Mizuka warns Lick to run away, as the green orbs are Tekatora's ultimate attack. Lick tries to jump as high as he can, but Tekatora reveals that the green orbs are the black hole. Lick tries his best to leave, but his movement is slowed down and he gets absorbed. After Lick was absorbed, Tekatora tells Lick to rest in peace and destroy the black orb with his hand. Lick wakes up in an unknown place where he hears Tekatora's voice describing the world as the place where he would die. He soon learns it is his mask talking with him, and soon, the other Baron's masks also appear in this world, including Lick's mask, who keeps blaming himself for the way the abandonment war turned out. He tried to cut off all the masks, but the masks automatically regenerated. All of Baron's masks criticize his actions and tell him to give up and die. He tries to explain himself but to no avail and soon, they convince him that his decision to kill everyone was wrong, so he gives up and decides to die alone. In the outside world, Hina and the others asked Tekatora where Lick was, and he explained that he had been absorbed into the gravity pit where he would die. Before Lick finally gave up, he overheard the voices of Hina and the others from the outside world, which gave him hope and the realization that he wasn't alone and gave him the strength to successfully destroy all the Baron masks and escape out. As Lick returns to the outside world, Tekatora tries to kill him again. However, Lick blocks his attack and tries to advise him to join his group and help him, as he needs his power to achieve his goal. Lick managed to knock him down with his fist, and after he accepted defeat, he returned the ballot to Hina and left, saying that he would never surrender to Lick and help him. Sometimes later, Line finally awoke from the surgery. As she tries to remember what happened beforehand, Line recalls her confession to Licht, which made her embarrassed, and claims it was a dream. 
Lime later realized it wasn't a dream and she was rejected by Licht. Outside the capital, Peli sees Licht in a very compromising position. He then demands to know how Licht knew he could perform a life-saving surgery on Lime. With a serious face, Licht explains that he already knew that he was more than just an ordinary soldier since the Abyss Demon incident. He then implies that he might be a spy from the Special Service. This makes him attempt to cut Lick's head off for blowing his cover, but he stops when Lick claims he is Lyne's friend, so he doesn't see him as an enemy. As Lick leaves, Sister Greengrocer calls Pell out to comfort Lyne, claiming this is the best chance for him to confess his feelings to her. While Pell refuses, Sister Greengrocer acts as a wingman and pushes Pell into the medical room, so he can have a conversation with Lyne. As Lyne cries, Pelly cooks a meal for her to eat, which she claims is delicious. Meanwhile, Heine confronts Licht somewhere in the forest, as she strips and asks him to develop plot with her. Licht reveals it'll be wrong to add more flat people to the world. Heine reveals that her mother taught her that if she finds a man she loves, she has to open her legs and not let him escape. As Licht was about to be violated, Jael and the others showed up. He asks Licht what he was going to do next so Licht says that he has decided to collect all seven ballots, but rather than destroying Althea, he'll find a way for humanity to survive without Althing so that humanity will have a better future. In the special services bases, Nicola informs Schnellman that the troop was prepared and they're ready to assassinate the king of Althea and take over the country. As Nicola leaves, Schnellman talks with a mysterious troop who seemed like members of Class A the students who supposedly died 300 years ago. If you've reached this far, let's confuse the fake fans by commenting cultured Ryoto. Do you think the mysterious troop is Class A from Lick's past? Let us know if you want Part 2 by commenting Plot Hunter in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you guys in the next video.